Good morning, everybody. It's Sunday, the 31st of January, 2021. Welcome to SBC Online. My name's Mark, and I look after this place. Uh, my name's Carl, and I don't look after this place. I'm an intern here. Yeah, but you're really important, Carl. Oh, thanks, Mark. With a very dashing beard today. Have yeah. you put some beard wax on that? Or yeah, something? I've decided from today I will wax my beard to make it stay in place and look really lovely and shiny. That's very good. What do you need to say yeah. to the people? Well, you're so welcome. If this is your first time with us. Uh, why don't you pop in the in the uh, live chat? Say hello. We'd love to meet you. If this is your thousandth time watching us, you're welcome as well. Do go say hello and. If you're feeling extra, extra cool. No, not cool. If you're feeling like you just want to encourage, encourage. If you, if you feel encouraged this morning, yeah, send this link to this service to your friends and family so they get to know Jesus. That's right. Why don't you invite them to come to church with you? It's never been easier to invite people yeah. to come to church with you because everyone's doing it from their living room. Yeah, Mark. Yes. Why are we outside? Yeah. So, in fact. Why are we outside? This is our th this is our third time of doing this yeah. outside. Last week we had the amazing Joe and Rachel from their dining room they where it was so warm, where it was warm yeah. and dry, and we are outside in the cold again. It's not safe. We just think it's not safe to be in the building right now. Infection rates is really seriously bad. Please be safe, everybody. So we think the safest thing to do is to film outside. Joe and Rachel live in the same house, so they can do it in their living room. Carl and I do not, which is why we're outside two meters away get back carl uh where it's safe uh please stay safe we're going to talk a little bit more about that later yes but first let's worship god through song this morning let's pray before we do that father god be with us this morning as we sing praises to you would your name be lifted high this morning though things here might not seem great with the death rate rising past a hundred thousand lord we know that you love us and that you are gracious and that you are mighty in power. Pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give me away. 
We're going to keep on holding that attitude of prayer and worship as we continue worshiping by taking up our financial offering. If you've been watching us regularly, you know we do this every week. It's such an important part of our own discipleship and our own relationship with God, where we say to Him, everything we have has come from you, and now we give back to you for the work of your kingdom in this place. We always encourage people uh, who have a great relationship with God to give generously sacrificially, and more than anything, cheerfully. Do it with a smile on your face. Uh, if you don't regularly give, or if you're not sure how to give, you can go to sbcgive.org.uk and you can make an offering perhaps after the service today. For now, let me pray and give thanks for all that we have and all that has been given to the work of God's kingdom through Stockton Parish Church. Father, thank you for your abundant generosity. Thank you for the truth that we cannot outgive you. And Lord, today we give back to you. Please receive our offering as a sign of our love for you. 
Lord, help us to grow generous hearts like yours. Help us to be sacrificial in our giving, just as you were sacrificial in everything. And Father, give us cheerful hearts that we would feel the deep sense of joy that comes from partnering with you and our brothers and sisters in the work of your kingdom. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Carl. Yes. A couple of weeks ago, we ran an advert for online small groups. We did, yeah. I hadn't seen the advert. Turns out you were a bit of a star of it. I am, of course, the star in everything I do, Mark. <laughs> Uh, I've had absolutely nobody write to me and say, please, can I have the contact details of this guy? What? How, I know, it's true. However, you did a great job. Thanks, Mark. How's your OSG going, your online small group? Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, we're, we're growing. And it's, it's going well. We're, we're, it's, it's really a, a really great friendship group now, yeah. to be honest with you. Yeah. And we're, we're growing more and more uh, in our knowledge and our love of Jesus. That's brilliant, yeah. that's brilliant. And are people becoming friends in your group? Have you yeah. got, I mean, did they all know each other before? We all knew each other before, but it's over this last three lockdowns. Yeah. We, I think we've, we've come together a lot more. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We'd love you to be in an online small group. Uh, please don't be shy, please don't be embarrassed. Please don't think, oh, I don't know anybody. That's exactly why you should join an online small group and make some friends. Why don't you watch Carl here in all his glory and uh, follow the links that are in the video. Okay, OSG means friendship. OSG means fellowship. OSG means encouragement. This online small group is our church. OSG means fun and laughter. OSG is a family to me. They are very supportive. OSG is a lifeline. Hey Carl, welcome to OSG. How's it going? One of the best things about 2020 were the relationships that were built through my online small group. Relationships that I'll never forget. It's not too late for you to join an OSG. Whether you've been part of our community for many, many years, or whether you're just beginning to connect with us through the Sunday videos, just click the link below or visit our website and register your interest for OSGs and we will have a chat with you to get you into the best group for you. We're in a series about calling and purpose and I hope you had a chance to watch last week's service and in particular John's teaching about calling, our primary calling. And he, he talked about five key areas. The last of those, number five, they're not in sequential order necessarily, but the last one that he mentioned was we are a people of hope. We're a people of hope. And I want to talk a little bit about that this morning because it was announced last week that in this country over 100,000 people have died as a result of COVID. I'm not sure how you feel about that. 100,000 is such a big number, and it may be so big that we can't actually comprehend what 100,000 looks like. Let me give you uh, an idea. This, on Sundays in our building, we would typically get between 160 and 180 people. If you've been to New Wine with us in the summer, there are about 10,000 people on the site. A typical premiership football match, uh, I obviously I wouldn't know, not being a football fan, I've had to look this up. That'll get 30 to 40,000 people in the stadium. Even Wembley Stadium, which is the second largest stadium in Europe, that only holds 90,000 people. This town, Stockton on Tees, has a similar population to the size of Wembley Stadium. The town has a population of about 86,000 people. More people have died of COVID in this country than live in this town. It is so easy just to think about the number and forget that each one of those people is a person loved by their family, known by their family, and absolutely known and loved by God. Every single one of those people is important. All 100,000 plus of them. I've got to say, I found this statistic this week really, really hard. 
it's affected me. I don't know how you feel about it. It's maybe a bit scared to go out. John mentioned last week that we are people of hope. I just want to read to you briefly from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 18 and 19. The Apostle Paul says this, I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened or opened in order that you may know the hope to which he, that's Jesus, has called you to, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That's a wonderful prayer. That's a wonderful call. That's a wonderful promise. Hope, the word hope, it's commonly used as a sort of wish. I hope this happens. I hope I get this for my birthday. But that depends on the person's desire. They've got to kind of wish it. They've got to, it, it all hinges on them. But in the Bible, hope is the confident expectation of what God has promised. It's the confident expectation of what God has promised. And its strength is in his faithfulness. Our hope doesn't depend on us. It rests on who God is, his character, his truth, his faithfulness, his unfailing love. As a church, we've been through difficult times, some really difficult times. And every time we go through a hard time, we do the same thing. We fix our eyes on Jesus, perhaps because actually we don't know what else to do. So we fix our eyes on Jesus, the author, the perfecter of our faith. And that's exactly what we're going to do for most of the rest of our time this morning. A hundred thousand people dead is a serious and significant milestone for this country. So we're going to fix our eyes on Jesus and we're going to pray. And what's going to happen is some of the people from our church are going to introduce a subject around COVID and this country. They're going to introduce it with a prayer. And I want to ask you today, when you're watching this video, to pause and be still and pray. Now, you might want to pray out loud at home as a family. You might feel more comfortable praying in the quiet of your heart. But let me invite you, please, as God's people, as we gather together as one on this video, would you pray? And why don't we begin that right now? Why don't you posture yourself for prayer? You might want to kneel. You might want to stand up so you're changing your posture, but position yourself for prayer. And let me begin. Father, a hundred thousand people are now no longer walking the earth in this country and so many more around the world. God, for most of us, that is a death toll we have never experienced before. And Lord, I know that there are people watching who have been directly affected by those who have died of COVID. Father, would you hear our prayer today? As your people, we gather our prayers together as one. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we bring our health before you. In all of our anxious thoughts and concerns over it, Father, we pray that you would hear us and you'd have mercy on us. Lord, we lift up our hospitals to you and all of the overwhelming things that are going on in them. Lord, would you see them and would you hold them up? Father, thank you for all of the teachers, support workers, the parents, carers, and students. 
in education during this lockdown period. Be with them, Lord, whether they be at school or whether they be at home school. Thank you, Father, that you're with them in everything they do. Amen. Father, I just want to pray for our leadership and our government. It's such a difficult time to be in these positions with so many impossible decisions to make. I just pray for people in these positions that they'll just recognise the enormity of the, the tasks that they face and they'll recognise that they can't do it in their own strength. Um, but they'll call out to you and as they do so, that they'll receive your wisdom, your grace and your guidance. This morning, God, we bring before you all of the people who are finding it hard right now. We pray for all of the frontline staff. And we thank you for the teachers and the NHS workers and shop workers. God, we pray against tiredness or illness and fear. But instead, God, we speak your love and your life over them. We ask for your protection and your peace to cover them and anyone who is struggling right now. God, we ask this in your name. Amen. Father, this week we are praying for the key workers as they're keeping the country moving. Dear Lord, I thank you for the scientific community that deal with the research, the treatments, the testing and the vaccines. I ask that you empower and equip them and use them into doing what is necessary in this time to help my people. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.
Let's pray for all the family and friends of those who have lost loved ones to coronavirus. Father, please receive the prayers of your people today. Fill our hearts with compassion and keep our eyes fixed on you, Jesus, our living hope. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Death has 
broken every chain there's salvation in your name jesus christ my living hope hallelujah praise the one who set me free hallelujah death has lost its grip on me you have broken every chain there's salvation Thanks for being with us this morning. Uh, we're almost at the end of our service. I, I've talked a little bit about how affected I've been by 100,000 people dying. And I just wanna encourage you, please stay safe. Please follow the guidelines that have been issued. It's the best way that we can demonstrate love and compassion for each other. Keep your distance. Wear a mask over your nose and your mouth. Keep your hands clean. Stay home as much as you possibly can. And if you are struggling at home, please get in touch with us. We'll do our very best to help you. Join an online small group where people can support you and love you. Mm. Yeah? Yeah, sorry. Carl, we normally finish, we have a prayer that we finish pretty much every service yeah. online. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. Yeah. Uh, the archbishops have written out to encourage us as a nation to pray for this nation and remember those who have died. They've written a special prayer, I think, Carl. Yeah. You want to lead us in it this yeah, morning? Yeah, can do. Gracious God, as we remember before you the thousands who have died, surround us and all who mourn with your strong compassion. Be gentle with us in our grief. Protect us from despair and give us grace to persevere and face a future with hope in Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Thanks for being with us this morning. We will be back here, although I hope not in the rain, Carl. No, no, no. I don't want to. <laughs> be safe this week. Bless you. Bye.